Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber and today I'm going to show you how I ended up making these lilies. And I had never made lilies before so I didn't know what I was doing and I decided to video it anyways just in case it went well. And uh, it did. So now I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> so I started off with some of this white paint by Gaffrey Art Materials. You can see the name on the bag there. Um, and then I just started off with a big amount of the white paint. And then I mixed in magenta. And the magenta is also by Gaffrey Art Materials, but it's not the heavy textured kind, as you can see. Um, I just really like their pigmentation and also their very high gloss finishes on their, both on their uh, heavy texture and on their mid and medium texture paints. So I really enjoy that. So I just like watching this paint mixing. I think it's really fun. And I love using paper plates to be my palette because I can just switch over to a new one whenever I'm ready and uh, always have a nice smooth surface for mixing. Oh, so this is a different shade of red. So the other one was magenta, and I think this one is handmade jam or something. And this one's also on the Gaffrey website, where it used to be. I don't know. They're doing a revamp on their website, which is really exciting. Um, I think they're switching over to tubes instead of using these little jars, so that's really cool. Uh, I haven't bought anything from them yet since... Um, like I haven't bought the the regular paint since uh, they did their revamp so I can't give you a review on that but uh, I, I just really think that's super cool and I think what I just added was a clear uh, Gaffrey medium I moved fast so I didn't see and I don't really remember I did this a while back might have been white it might have been white But as you can see, I like working with a lot of paint. It's pretty exciting. So I didn't actually film the whole process of me making them, unfortunately. So the palette knife I was using to mix it is what I use to just make little leaf uh, petals, petal shapes, and then I let them dry. Uh, so they were really simple to make and I could definitely show you guys start to finish how to make it again sometime. Uh, next time I make them I'll definitely video the whole thing. Um, so this is the first one I did and I sped it up because I was kind of bored watching it in real time. Um, so this is what the first lily looked like after assembling it. Uh, and I didn't like it very much because it was very flat and lilies are never flat. They're not supposed to be that way. I didn't like the look of it and, you know, I was just kind of like underwhelmed by it. Um, but because of how I had placed it, um, I just decided to let it dry. By the way, what I am putting these onto is canvas boards that are covered in plastic still because you can really easily just peel the plastic or the petals from the plastic uh, so it makes a very very good working uh, surface for it. I usually use um, parchment paper to pipe onto or I use acetate um, but also when I'm just doing freeform stuff that doesn't need to have a specific type of like roses when you're doing roses it's really nice to work one at a time in the center of your piping nail 
um, and then move those to a separate surface. But for lilies and leaves and vines and things like that, these work really well to pipe onto. Um, what I'm adding to the middle are some stamens I bought from Amazon. They are, I think, thread dipped in plastic or something. Um, and I painted them so that I could use them for this. I don't really like them. Um, they just add a different dimension to the flower. So you can definitely decide if that's something you're interested in or not. Yeah, this flat one did not turn out great. But then I took some of that magenta heavy textured um, paint that I had used to create kind of that center of the flower and I pulled it out towards the middle of each petal and I created this very very nice um, kind of blend which if you look at stargazer lilies they have kind of that deep magenta towards the inside and then they also have really nice spots and it was really fun I enjoyed this part a lot just pulling that color out from the middle it was really really nice I enjoyed that And I actually ended up not even using the canvas that is painted green on the side. I played around with the placement of how I wanted to create it. And honestly, by the end, I just didn't like how it looked. So it's in the video still because I just left it there. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just change your mind. So stargazer lilies also have a little bit of lightness around the edges of their petals so i just took in some white and i just kind of feathered around the outside uh you know i didn't go for a high uh, contrast look or anything like that i just let it i just let it kind of blend in and this is also a um, Gaffrey mid texture paint and it dries in a high gloss finish which I like so if uh, you've seen me do other work on this channel um, I often use those uh, I'm trying to remember what they're called right now I think it's Liquitex basics I could be wrong but I'm, I'm sure you've seen them those always have a matte finish, which I don't care for. Uh, but, you know, they have a wide variety of colors. And the paints don't dry very quickly when you're working with them. So it gives you a little bit longer of a painting window if you're doing like a traditional painting style. So the Gaffrey paints usually all dry pretty fast, which when you're t uh, doing flowers like this, piping, uh, working with the textured sculptural type of thing, I like that. I like that it dries fast and I can move on and, you know, work on a new project. Um, but when I'm doing more traditional painting, it's nice to have a little bit longer of a working window. So. You know, it's just a matter of choosing the correct tool uh, for what your needs are. So for the second flower, I decided that I wanted to have um, I wanted to have the petals all turned upward a lot more. So I created this tin foil. Uh, 
holder, I guess. And I just essentially creased it so that it would have um, somewhat of a basin, I guess, in the center and then kind of come up at the sides. You can kind of see what I'm trying to explain. Um, and then I just assembled it like that and I liked how that one dried a lot. I think that was my favorite. So that's definitely a good choice. And also, <laughs> I know I've said a lot of things about things you can pipe onto. Foil works too. You can peel it off foil as well. Man, watching this video, I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, I could do this again, but so much better. So I might have to go and make you guys a new video version of this. I love reading your comments, by the way. I really, really enjoy that. It makes me so excited to uh, think about painting and creating more content for you guys. So please hit me with uh, requests if you like, and if I'm in the mood for it, I'll make them. Um, and I love to answer questions. If I can be helpful, that's really cool. I don't know everything, and I'm just out here winging a lot of stuff. But I have learned a lot of things on my own just from, you know, when you wing things, you learn a lot. <laughs> so I definitely can answer a lot of questions. Um, I could even do a prob You know what? I should probably do like a frequently asked questions uh, video regarding this paint because um if you guys are on tiktok you'll probably see that adrian by abstracts by adrian she does tons of beautiful artwork she has definitely inspired me a lot and uh, i love seeing her content she's i would say she's tiktok famous so um you know i'm sure you guys have seen her but, you know, you read the comments under things like this, and there's just so many questions. And uh, I could just start answering a lot of the questions I've seen online regarding this type of stuff. That might be helpful for some people. Yeah, there's so many wonderful creators. And I love watching us because we all have, like, we all use similar tools and techniques in some ways and then in other ways we're just like not at all the same you know like everyone has such a unique style and i just think that's so exciting i love how we as artists we just we're so unique and that's just really fun for me yeah, I really, really like this lily that's facing us that's already in the tin foil. I'm pretty sure that's my favorite one of the three I did. Because I'm looking at the one I'm holding in my hand right now, and I think that one dried a little bit funny. I don't know why I think that. You know, and I made these months ago. Probably... Hmm... Um, Maybe in December even. I don't know. It feels like a while. So. But you know, I have some new paint. I bought some new paint a few weeks ago. So I really could make a bunch of new videos for you guys. I just uh, need to actually do them. I have a few ideas too. I do have a few ideas. So that's pretty exciting. Right now I'm just editing old footage and putting it together because it's good stuff. I just never got around to doing it and, um, well, <laughs> now's the time. And I've been sewing a lot, like I said in my previous video. So, you know, my station is set up for sewing right now, so I'd have to do a little rearranging. And every time I make these flowers, they take a while to dry, so they need to have a designated surface where they're not going to be um, messed with. So I need to find a place in my house where I can kind of designate a spot as a holding station for these for about, about a week, 
I say. Maybe two weeks for like really big roses or something like that. But um, it, it doesn't take long. It's just for me, I get so much done in a day if I'm in the mood for it that it feels like it takes a long time for me. So I just... Uh, I just did the lilies and now I'm going to show you how I ended up using them. So here I've got more of the Gaffrey paint and I'm using a tulip tip here. Um, I have a little bit of, uh, it's not a dusty rose, but it's kind of like a peachy pink here. And I think they actually don't make that one anymore now that I think about it. And then I also have some of the light phthalo blue and some white and maybe some clear maybe i don't remember i'm sorry and then i'm just going in to make these tulips and i hated them <laughs> so a few of them a few of them stood up straight and honestly too many of them just flopped and i was like you know what i'm not interested in this so i think i used what i had in my bag um to create kind of a diagonal slash across the canvas and um you know, it looked nice, but it wasn't my favorite. So the reason I did that little squish and slide across the canvas is because the paint Let's see how to explain this. So if the paint is too soft and squishy, um, it kind of does like what it did just right there. The definition that we got for the first few disappears completely. So you have to wipe it off so you can get the sharp edges again. Otherwise it just squishes together in a dollop. So it was very time consuming and not super fun um, to do this tip. Uh, so I think I switched over and you'll see it in a few minutes, um, where I just switched over to a different tip. And I want to say the tip I ended up using is a 2D Korean tip, I think. And I want to also say it's called a drop flower tip. See, I don't know all the correct terms for things. I just know what I like and... Um, you know, like they can help me. So, uh, I know what works for me. However, I'm not exactly sure. I went to buy it again and I bought one on Amazon and when it came here, it was squished a little bit. And, uh, because it has like the five teeth or whatever you want to call it, this is the one. See this? I love this tip. I use it all the time. Yeah, 2D Wilton Korean tip. And um, I bought another one of these uh, from Amazon and they shipped it in a envelope and it came squished. So I don't know how, to be honest, I don't know where this one came from, how I got it or anything, but I love it. I use it a lot. You can see by all the paint smears on it that I just never washed off. <laughs> So what I just did is I squished out the rest of the paint that was in the tulip bag and then I added clear behind it so that it's going to have kind of like a weird translucent um, tinted effect. I like this part. It takes so much paint to do this. But it's so much fun. I love doing it. Squish, 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 squish. So much fun. Love it. And then here we've got a lily. And you can see how nicely that one peels right off of the... Um, well, not so nice. 
it looks like it got into the creases, but you can just snip it right off. Yup. See how nicely it held that cup shape? I think that's really cool. Look at that! Super cool. I don't think I ended up using these blue ones. I wanted to, but I just didn't feel like they went with it. I guess. So basically here, I just wanted to cover all the surface area with wet paint so that I could start setting in all the flowers I wanted to use. Now, if you wanted, what you could do is you could concentrate. And so you can kind of see I did an all over effect where I just created the same amount of paint um, across the whole canvas, except for maybe around the edges. Like you can see, I'm going very light. But what you could do is you could add a lot more height to the middle of your painting or wherever you want the focus to be and then taper it down or even you know make it disappear around certain parts of your canvas um, i've definitely done that as well i just like to experiment with a whole bunch of different things and ideas and i'm always having new ideas so that's always fun for me So now I'm adding white to that bag that I just used. So now it's a tinted white instead of a tinted clear like I'd used before. So when it dries, the stuff with the clear is going to be a lot more translucent and the white's going to stand out, even if they kind of look the, alike right now. Man, I really wanted to use those. <laughs> Just not enough to actually use them, I guess. I don't remember what I was thinking. I think I honestly just had so many of the pink flowers um, already made and in my storage. So I really wanted to stick with uh, variety of like pink shades and these are actually a little more peachy these peonies here um, and I have like a variety of cool and warm pink and peach shades so I think I just figured that's enough variety I don't know what I was just showing you guys Ah, uh, yeah, there's the other lily. It turned out really nice.
Oh yeah, and these are little, um, little purplish flowers I just had left over from another project. That's why I like making some of these, uh, I don't even know what to call them, but they're just kind of random, a bunch of flowers together because I like to make a lot of them and try some different techniques and things, practice some new ideas. And uh, when I just do something like this, it's super, I just kind of pick a color and then everything that kind of matches, I just go ahead and put it on the canvas. I really enjoy how they turn out because then I have such a variety, I have a lot of fun, and it's really just, I mean, you can't see it off because it's off camera, but you can see the little stack of things I have next to me. I just kind of lay out everything I think might look good, and I just pull one thing at a time and just kind of, you know, you can see how I'm kind of holding it over the painting to kind of see, oh, do I want it to go here? Do I not want to go with that one? And uh, it's just, it's very free-spirited. It's very uh, enjoyable. And yeah, I like how it turned out. So I definitely do that kind of thing quite a bit. One of the videos I have coming up for you guys is um, when I did a big purge of all my flowers that I had and I made three small 10 by 10s and I just used flowers I'd already made and it was really fun. And not all of them look great, <laughs> but that happens sometimes, you know, no pressure. Like it doesn't always have to be amazing. So, uh, you know, that's also a pretty fun video. So I look forward to editing that for you guys as well. But I think this one's pretty much done. And I don't think I filmed myself adding green centers to all of them, but I definitely added green. I mean, look how nice that looks. And then I'll show it to you guys in the sun as well. But you can see the translucence there. Like, isn't that cool? It just adds such a different value. And then in the middle, you can see in between the lilies, it's a little bit more white. But it's just so much texture, so much color. It's so, uh, so fun. And I love those little blue flowers I ended up adding. They're so cute. 